a river be a mother? Can humanity in birth, in rites of passage and in death find solace in the arms of a river? Yes, it can if the river happens to be Ganga. My name is Loki Shori and I am a cultural anthropologist. For over 10 years, I have been researching the various aspects that make Ganga so special for mankind. Come with me as we, through the series supported by ATCS, take a peek into little known aspects of the Mother River in her journey through the Himalayas. A few years ago, I was at the airport in Frankfurt. Our flights were delayed and I met a German gentleman who was sitting right next to me and we started a conversation. He asked me where I was from and I told him that I was from Dehradun. He did not know the place. I told him I was from the Himalayas and immediately he jumped up and he said, the place where the Beatles went, are you from Rishikesh? This is the recall value of Rishikesh, a spot which is so popular that people flock to this land looking for the music in their lives. The Beatles came here looking for peace. They came here looking for happiness. They had everything that they could hope for. They had money, they had sex, they had drugs, they had everything that they could think of. The only thing that they did not have was inner peace and happiness. And they came here to this ashram on the banks of the Ganga looking for this peace and happiness. Today, Rishikesh reverberates with the sound of music. There are still some people who are carrying forward this legacy of music, which the Beatles and many other masters who came here left behind. So we are talking about the story of Mukesh Dhiman, who set up a studio called Jungle Vibes and started manufacturing Jiridus, an Australian Aboriginal instrument, which is now being supplied the world over from here that's the story of Jiridu coming from Australia to Rishikesh and then going all across the world. It began in 1965 with the shooting of a film called Help in London's Twickenham Studios. The film was an unabashedly mindless slapstick comedy and sought to caricature everything Indian. Featuring the Beatles, it portrayed through a grotesquely slanting prism. Ironically, it turned out to be the first encounter with Indian culture for the boys from Liverpool, who would soon find themselves on the banks of the Ganga, trying to combat their inner demons. It was during the shooting of this film that George Harrison first saw and heard the sitar being played in the background. So fascinated was he with the sound and the instrument that it would become his lifelong passion to learn to play it as a disciple of Pandit Ravi Shankar. This passion for the sitar inspired him and his band to come to Rishikesh. Usually described as the yoga capital of the world, Rishikesh is immensely popular as a place of pilgrimage and as a spiritual retreat. For years, not just the Beatles, but millions have made a beeline for Rishikesh, looking for that one thing beyond money, fame, success, sex, drugs, that can count for true happiness. Time spent by the Beatles near the Ganga did not transform them into yogis, but the most popular band ever did feel grounded enough to compose over 20 of their most iconic songs from the White Album, Abbey Road and Let It Be here in this retreat in the forest. Yes, let it be. Perhaps that is the message of Rishikesh. This quaint little pilgrim town along the Ganga evokes a mix of emotions and feelings one day, while strolling through the by lanes, I stumbled upon this little shack called Jungle Vibes that many years after the Beatles 
continues to vibe with the divine music of the flowing waters. If I were to ask you to combine all your ideas of well-being and joy into just one monosyllable, that sound, I guess it would have to be OM. Yes, OM, the primordial sound from which all creation emanated, is the sound that this woodworker, the founder of Jungle Vibes heard when he first held the aboriginal wind instrument, the jiridu, in his hands. He knew in an instant that he had met his destiny and would go on to create a legacy of crafting thousands of jiridus and jembes. A jiridu is a simple, hollow, log-based wind instrument that is believed to have come into existence some 1500 years ago. Developed by indigenous aboriginals from Australia, the instrument produces a deep, sonorous, meditative sound, perhaps the sound of OM. Well, whatever the sound, what we hear at Jungle Vibes, the studio established by Mukesh Dhiman, who made jiridus after having been taught the art by an Australian pilgrim in 1980, is divine music. Over the years, Jungle Vibes has become a mecca for seekers of pure sound. A very rustic space, the studio serves the purpose of a shop as well as the workshop where volunteers create their own sound and instrument. Visitors are welcome throughout the day. The speciality of Jungle Vibes is that all instruments are handcrafted on a neat basis. I too tried to learn the ropes here. Being here playing music, carving out your own instrument is a joy that can only be had by a person who soaks in the music wafting in the air on the banks of the Ganga. Whether it be the Beatles or Mukesh Dhiman, Mother Ganga and the spiritual vibrations here ensure that life takes a new turn for all those that seek. It is almost as if you begin to appreciate life anew and start walking the path of devotion, losing yourself in the divine music of the flowing waters becomes a calling. And that reminds me of what Mukesh once said, to be a good person, always keep your tools sharp and your mind open. मैं अपने आप को नहीं जानता लेकिन डिजरीडू मेरे को जानता है मैं डिजरीडू को जानता हूं बस इतनी कहानी है कि मुझे बहुत प्यार है डिजरीडू से मेरे को नींद भी नहीं आती अगर एक रात नहीं बजाता तो मेरा कुछ खोसा जाता है दुनिया में 